2020 right around the corner and with the new year, a new decade, coming some new public listings. Some of the most highly anticipated market entrants include Postmates, Palantir, Airbnb, and Robinhood. We'll see whether they get off the ground in 2020. Joining us right now to talk about those and the rest of the IPO pipeline is Devin Parrick. He's the uh, managing director at uh, venture capital firm Insight Partners. Good morning. Good morning. Before we get to those names, I want to ask you about this story. I don't know if you can see it here. Front page of the Wall Street Journal. Can we get that right there? Okay, nice. Uh, SEC moves to expand private market access. And the whole idea of this is that historically, as you know, so many of the gains have come in, come in the private markets. And frankly, it's felt like the public has been left holding the bag. And I'm thinking now of Uber and Lyft and some of these other, other IPOs. And historically, you had to be what's called an accredited investor. Yep. Somebody with a million dollars or more, there were rules around it. Now the SEC is trying to open that up to democratize private markets. Is this a good thing or not? And, and the reason I mention it is I, I'm starting to also think about WeWork. Had you owned WeWork in the private markets, you might have thought it was good, but you didn't have the detail. And it wasn't until the detail became released publicly in the S1 that people really appreciated and understood the challenges that that business had. And well, importantly, even those who had the details didn't necessarily make the best investment decisions. So first, I'd say is that there's a flaw that the public actually doesn't have access to these investments. Because if you look at us, our largest investors are pension funds. Um, and there's a massive amount of pension money, endowment money right. that is invested in. But managed funds. by professionals. But managed by professionals. I think what we're talking about is the idea that m myself or my mother or father. So would... my, my, my look, it's a debate between investor protection and access. Right. And there's a right. view that would say. A lot, there's lots of smart people, and they're not all rich, and they should have access to investments. Why well, not? And, the, and the argument before this was that they couldn't get access until it was handed over to mm -hmm. retail investors, and as a result, they were the ones always left holding the bag. Loaded valuations. Right. Like the, like this was, the uh, again, the inequality. You can't get in on this stuff. Personally, I think it's dangerous. Um, Personally, I've, you're saying you don't think that... that I, I think the ability average for... Average Joe should have access to these well, things. Well, I think it's the problem is that I don't think the average person is going to get access to the information they need to make an informed decision. And if you look at, if you look at venture capital, just as an asset class over a really long period of time, you know, there's a, the returns are actually fairly concentrated and not lots of firms. Right. So even professionals right. with access to lots of information... And, and it's how you make, make that definition where Andrew started out. What is an accredited investor? Right. It used to be $200,000 uh, $200, of income, 300000 combined with your spouse, and you had to have a million right. in assets excluding your home. But now they're trying to do the angle of education, right. Right. where if you are sophisticated enough, but who's deciding, who's deciding whether you're that? sophisticated? Is there a test? Is there a series and that you have to take? Effectively, what they're talking about doing is not inflation indexing that anymore. So it's just with time, right. $200,000 is a lot less money, or and a million dollars in assets is a lot less time in 10 years than it is today. So just by natural, you're going to have more people who are going to... But I don't think what, what I didn't see, and I, I've only read the articles, right. I haven't actually seen the documents. I don't see the other side, which is how are we going to make sure that people have access to the information? I mean, the SEC does a very good job right. of making but sure that before also, you buy a public but market... But you also made the point, you look at WeWork, and people had the information, or at least thought they had the information, and they were accredited investors, and there were smart people, smart in quotes... Including professionals. ...involved in this. Yes. And they were the agents, if you will, in between this, and they still made the wrong decision. Right, so my view is that... Uh, I just think it's very hard to create a market structure where small investors are going to get access to information that really lets them make an informed decision. Put aside the fact that professional investors may or may not do a better job with the same information. I just don't think there's an easy way the, to The only that problem out. is how could it be worse than the situation that's at hand right now where they're buying stocks that have already reached maximum valuation and they're left holding the bag anyway what's what's the risk to buying at a cheaper valuation i, I understand yeah. I, just to push back though how do they get hurt more in this scenario versus the one that they've already been hurt in holding the bag after everyone has made their money so to me the middle ground uh would be and now i'm going beyond having now right. read the proposal i'm just kind of riffing here but i think the the middle ground would be if large mutual fund companies created significant pools of capital that were professionally managed and allowed access for, for, for in effect, a fidelity-managed private equity fund that invested in these types of companies. I can at least understand that you've got some, you've right. got some, those people are going to get that data. We got to run. We mentioned all those companies uh, before when you first came on. Real quick, 
Palantir, does it go public in 2020? Yeah, I, I, personally, I think your four companies yep. were... Uh, Airbnb. Uh, Airbnb, I think, probably does. We're not investors in any of them. Okay. Uh, Airbnb, I think, does go public. Uh, Palantir, I don't think, goes public. Uh, Postmates, I don't actually know. I think it has a very challenging right. comp universe yep. right now. Can't remember what the last one was. We got DD on the list. We got a couple others. But yeah, I, I think next year will be a right. good year for public markets, but I would, I would end with this. Yep. This year was the year of the enterprise uh, and not next, the year of the consumer. And, and the question year. is, will it be the year will of the consumer? Right, that's okay. right.